Hello and welcome to BuildBox. In this video, we're going to explore some more advanced character asset options. So I've selected our character asset for our game, and let's start by talking about some different types of animations. We've already added in our default character animation, but there are many different animations we can add in depending on the type of game we're creating. So I know we want to have a move animation for our character, so I'll go ahead and grab a PNG sequence for our character moving. And I'll just drag the entire sequence over the move animation box and drop it in. And you can see our move animation sequence has been added. Now here we could edit and refine our animation sequence further. We could delete this animation sequence. Or if we just wanted to swap this animation sequence out for another animation sequence, we can drag and drop a new sequence on top of it. And we've just replaced that animation sequence. Now, this is actually the defeated animation, so I won't want to keep this in the move animation slot. So I'll go ahead and drag the move animation sequence back to this spot so that this is the correct moving animation that shows when the character moves throughout the game. I'll go ahead and add in a few more animation sequences. And now things are starting to look a bit more complete. Really quick, let's jump into what each of these animations are. The shooting animation is the animation that appears when the character is shooting, if you've got a shooter type game. The bullet animation would be the animation of the actual projectile that the character shoots. The jump animation is the animation as the character jumps. The move animation is the running or walking animation as the character moves. And the defeated animation is what happens when the character dies. So fill in these animations as needed and as relevant for your game. Scrolling down, we have different sounds we can add for the character. We can add a jump sound, we can add shooting sounds, a defeated sound for when the character is killed, or a ground collision sound for when the character hits the ground. Same thing, you can just drag and drop sounds, you can edit those sounds, and you can replace those sounds by dropping new sounds on top of any of these slots. Now, depending on the type of game that you're creating, you may have a couple gameplay effects that you want to apply to your character. For example, you could use Cast Shadow to allow your character to cast a shadow if you're using a light effect, like in the game Phases. And the same is true for the Auto Tilt feature. If that's a feature in your game and you want your character to respond to that, then you can select the Auto Tilt feature to allow your character to use that. Next, we have the Game Over effects. First is the game over delay, which is how long you wait before the game over sequence plays. The camera shake option allows you to set how long the camera shakes when the character is defeated. And leaving this set to zero means that camera shake is off. Camera flash allows you to set how long the camera flashes when the character is defeated. And again, leaving this set to zero means that camera flash is off. And finally, the fall attribute allows you to set how fast the character falls when defeated. So if the character gets defeated and then falls off the screen, you can set how fast they fall here. And again, zero means that there is no fall attribute when the character dies. They don't fall off the screen. Lastly, at the bottom of the screen, you can choose whether or not this is a free character, if they're available for purchase with in-game currency, via an in-app purchase, or with reward videos. And then you can also adjust some more advanced character settings and how they interact with the game in the character gameplay settings down here at the bottom. Thanks for watching.